I'm Mike. I'm going to be showing you guys my advanced page properties web part. This is my obligatory credit slide, um, but the bottom line is uh, I like building things and solving problems. Uh, definitely hit me up on Git or Twitter. Um, one of the ways that I solve client problems at Three Will is we do a lot of this digital workplace consulting. And a lot of times that'll start with workshops and oftentimes it'll end in like full blown automation, site template provisioning. And I bring that up because it's a good segue into why I built this web part. In the course of these digital workplace journeys, we inevitably end up with a set of pages that have both rich content and rich metadata. Um, some of that metadata is going to get used for news and highlighted content roll ups, uh, or it's just useful for search. And some of it is still going to make sense for display on a page. And that's where, you know, we might typically use the normal page properties web part. But we've run into a lot of instances where we want to do more and it can display a fair amount of that metadata, but it has some lackings when it comes to different types of data and and you start to run into things when you realize you want to stretch it a little bit further. SharePoint lists, you know, have continued to mature. You know, we've got, you know, for instance, the, the capsule display, you know, over time things have have just continued to modernize in the lists, but the page properties web part has not so much uh, improved over time. It's still got a little bit of that older look. Um, it doesn't react to the theming, uh, especially backgrounds. That's always a big one. Uh, it doesn't support links, currency, images, uh, and then it has kind of this default behavior for dates and numbers. Not It doesn't necessarily abide by the actual sub properties that you configure it for. So, you know, like I said, like solving problems, like building things. So my way to contribute was to try to take something that might normally look like this and actually address those uh, those issues that I mentioned so that I can have something that looks a little more like that. So let's go ahead and look at it in action. So I've got this employee spotlight page. And this is actually a fairly common, you know, page template that uh, that we combine with that metadata uh, for a lot of customers. So this is a fairly common uh, example that we might run into. So I've dropped my web part onto the page. I'll go ahead and name it. So you'll notice uh, that out of the gate, it it tries very hard to look almost identical to the original part. Definitely wanted it to feel familiar. Uh, maybe it's slightly different icons, but otherwise everything's just about the same. The big difference is just that I'm getting more uh, properties available to me. Uh, you know, it still does the same old ones like text and, um, you know, like a uh, term set. Uh, that's the usual, but you can see I'm trying to actually style it a little more the way uh, lists have modernized their displays for multi choice or term sets. But let's go ahead and uh, try something different like a link. So that's something we couldn't have done previously. Another one would have been, uh, let's say, currency couldn't have done that before. Let's see what else we got. Image is a big one. Let's see what happens there. And let's go ahead and add a date, like an anniversary date. And uh, the big difference there is that it's it is actually abiding by the format that you've even specified in the field as well. So that's kind of the part in action. Uh, you know, the normal stuff is also there. You know, I can I can uh, I can delete. I can change just the standard, you know, functionality that we've had in the past as well. Just does more, right? Okay. So I can go ahead and save that and things are looking good. So let's go ahead and look at the code. So um, there's two main concepts. Well, there's, there's a number of main comments, but the big thing here is trying to track the available properties for those dropdowns and then needing to track 
each thing that you select or that our users are going to select. And you can see that represented in the uh, web part properties uh, and our selected properties array. And this is just tracking the internal names of the fields that they're going to select. And then uh, our available properties uh, is tracking uh, using the drop down option, and that's just the uh, name value pair. Right below that, you can see that I'm starting to scaffold the code necessary for tracking the theme when the theme changes and uh, the actual variant that needs to get passed down to the component. Big shout out to Hugo. Uh, I essentially followed his blog post on this to the T to get this working. And uh, in my blog post on this, I've referenced his as well. So, um, and you can see, you know, where. From the component perspective, uh, the web part is taking the selected properties uh, that the user is selected and our theme variant and passing that down as a as uh, properties for the component. One of the core functions of the web part uh, on the web part side is needing to actually establish what those available properties can be. You can see we're using the PMPJS library to establish uh, the fields for site pages. Um, there's a bit of strange alchemy uh, just below here where I had to kind of by trial and error uh, start to figure out what properties Microsoft was using to determine what goes into that drop down. And that's kind of these uh, the stuff that you see up here in the top part of the condition. And then down here are some uh, different types that I've had to exclude for now uh, just because I hadn't figured out the right way to display it yet. Uh, so there are, you can already see that there's room for improvement uh, in other ways to contribute. The only other thing to point out about the web part is uh, the way that we have to render out the property pane, because that's really the big deal uh, with the web part. Uh, and everything's governed by what's in the selected properties array. So as they add, as they delete, we're affecting change on the selected properties array. So you can see that I've got an event handler for when they click delete, when they click add, we're either pushing, uh, pulling, or, or changing uh, an actual value. And that's all against our selected properties. If I go down just a little bit more to where we render out the, uh, the property pane, you can see again, the selected properties array is being employed where we're looping through that. And that's where we're actually pulling in a dropdown uh, of the available properties and that delete button and that add button. So let's jump over to the component itself that the web part's loading up. It doesn't have to do that much. It's just all in the logic, right? Uh, you can see we're using React hooks. And the main thing we need uh, to track state on is this value page prop values. I'll take a quick detour just to show you that object type just because it's worth pointing out, because this is really at the heart of it, right? I at, at runtime, I need to know as much metadata about the field itself, uh, and then I need to be able to capture any and all possible values for that field for the page. So we need to cast the widest net possible, and so it's in any array. Oh, and I guess I'll point out too, this is just the standard PMP object for the field information, but that gets us everything that we need. Uh, just below that, you can see where I'm setting the theme variant. Again, uh, uh, making use of that all in the display uh, at runtime. So refresh properties, this is kind of the lifeblood uh, function of the component. Again, I, like I mentioned, we've got two main uh, things we're trying to get down to, and that's uh, we need to know all of the actual values for that specific page in the list. So that's the first thing that we're going to go ahead and grab. We know the selected properties. So we're going to go ahead and make a call using PMP to actually get that list item out and all of the values, regardless of what they are. And then we also need to establish all the metadata for each field so that we can figure out how we're going to, you know, what rules we're going to employ, right? Like I mentioned before, I need to ensure that I'm casting the widest net. So I've got to make sure that I can convert anything to that any array. So that's kind of you know what's going on here. Uh, some of the fields, based on their type, they come down. You know, you don't know exactly which way they're going to come down. They could have different properties. They're they're completely different objects. You got to be prepared for that. So and that includes um, having to convert it to an any array can be a little bit different depending on the type. 
again, use effect, uh, whenever the property gets changed in the property pane, we're pushing that down to the component and that's going to trigger another refresh of the, uh, of the display. Um, the, the rendering is a little bit nested, you know, as we go down, you know, we're, we're looping through all of the properties right here, and then we're actually displaying all the actual property values based on the property. So that gets us to the main method, which is our render page prop values for display. And again, it's very reactive. The, the whole idea is to just in, essentially interrogate the type of field it is and use that type to help us determine the ways that we're going to actually display that data. And that includes, that could include making entirely different elements on the page or just having different styles. Um, you can even see as we get into something like a daytime display, we might interrogate some of those sub properties uh, that you save it as in the list that's going to help us know which way to format the date um, according to, and I, and I basically, I. I used the way it gets displayed in the list as my baseline for how I was going to display it in the uh, in the web part. And that's essentially it. The only other thing, again, I'll just point out, you may have already noticed it throughout, uh, you know, up here in some of the rendering is, is um, again, we're just interrogating our theme variant uh, to decide, um, you know, based on uh, what's going on uh it, behind the scenes which background we should be using um and that's the same here in our main render method so that's basically the part uh i did want to point out that i've already had a number of other ideas uh and i wanted to make sure i just threw up this slide for other folks because i would love to get more contributors and i'd love to continue to grow this part like i said we do use the normal you know, page properties part on a number of pages still for customers, and they always want to be able to click the capsules. Uh, they kind of, they they feel like they should be kind of almost like tags. Um, so I'd love to come up with, uh, with a solution to actually allow those to actually be clickable and do something with it. Uh, People Fields is the only one that I don't support that the original does, so I'd definitely like to get that. And I'd love to get any other ideas uh, from the community. Uh, so please, um, if you feel inclined, go out to the uh, Git repo of PMP samples, and uh, if you put in an issue and at mentioned me, I'd, I'd be happy to help or uh, contribute with you. Thank you again for your time. Uh, like I said, you can read up on this part on the Tech Community blog, and you can access the code in the PMP samples repo, and uh, please contribute. Thank you, guys. Really fantastic stuff, Mike. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, if folks are interested, you know, he's asking for contribution help. So that'd be a great way uh, if you're looking for a place to contribute and get involved. Uh, this seems like a really uh, fantastic opportunity. Mm -hmm.